presentation about the purpose of the GECO Foundation. Thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, being here for our talk uh, today. Uh, Patrick and I are going to talk about the GECO Foundation and sort of like what, what it's established for and where it's going. So uh, I'm going to say I, about us, so uh, a little bit about me, uh, some background. I tend to like to throw these little stories in there about some interesting aspect. And uh, if some of you were earlier here, saw my desktop uh, background um, or wallpaper, I'm a Star Wars fan and not a Trek fan, but, but I, of course I do like Star Wars. And um, I did uh, see Star Wars at a movie theater in the 70s, which was great. I guess it says how old I am, but it was really exciting. A drive-in theater. A drive-in theater, yeah, yeah. So, um, but, but the rest there, you can see about me. Uh, Patrick, do you want to say anything? So uh, I'm, <clears throat> I've been uh, involved in technology for 35 years and with uh, Linux for probably about 20. Um, I'm a consultant, my company is iLayer, um, and that's kind of it. I don't have any interesting stories. None. <laughs> it's, that's an inside joke. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I work with the OpenSUSE project. I, I work for SUSE, and uh, I do a variety of other things as well. So I'm very engaged with the community, community, and I've been doing that for about nine years now. So next slide. Um, so I kind of like the agenda that we're going to cover over the next 25 minutes or so. Um, about us, which you, you just had. Uh, intro to the Geeko Foundation. Uh, what, what are the issues we're trying to solve? Like, why did we start this, uh, this foundation? And then, of course, the purpose. We'll, we'll try to explain these out and have a conversation so that you understand where our minds are here and, and what we're trying to do. And then we'll sum it up. So, um, intro to the Geeko Foundation. Uh, going over this. We're, we're kind of establishing ourselves because you, know, you, you need an overall purpose for, for, for your foundation and you have to list some, some goals. And um, some of that has to deal with open standards. You know, we want to ad advocate for open source. Um, we want to, of course, well, we are sort of experts in the field of this. So of, of open source, we deal with businesses, we deal with communities. So we have a good idea about what's taking place and sort of what the issues are. Uh, you want to expand on that? Yeah, and one of, the, uh, one of the, the main reasons, or the primary reasons, is because we've, got, we've discovered that there's, uh, with open source and Linux projects in general, that there is no single location where you can donate funds to. So you, you could donate to some of the, the larger companies like Canonical, but you don't know, or um, Red Hat or SUSE, but you don't know if those money, if those funds are going to go anywhere that makes any sense, or, or is it just going to help their bottom line? So we've we've created the the Geeko Foundation. It's a not not for profit uh, enterprise, which basically w means we're not allowed to make a profit, um, and it's a place that the community can, or individuals or companies can donate funds into to to drive development of certain projects forward. Yeah, so, and, and with that, you know, we want to advocate the open source software and as well as hardware. And then some of the goals kind of coming on within the open source realm where you look at like um, coding that uh, makes effective use of energy. Um, also the reuse and repurpose of, of hardware that's out there. These are relatively key points that are coming up more and more uh, that you'll see. Um, and so, We'll move on to the next one. Oh, and then of course we want to support events as well. So that's, that's why we're here. Um, but we also want to uh, do that in other ways like sponsoring and, uh, well, as much as we can do. Uh, and also drive some, some events where we hopefully can have something of our own or be a part of it. So these are the trustees. Um, Patrick has founded it. So uh, very happy that he took that initiative. It's been a topic within the OpenSUSE project for several years. Um, and, you know, we constantly share in the, in the community uh, 
as far as the open source community, there's a lot of like intersection that takes place between different projects, um, different packages, things like that. You know, and, and if, if you're familiar with say OpenSUSE, uh, there is a, uh, we have several projects like OpenQA, which is a quality assurance project, and that's being used by Fedora, it's being used by OpenSUSE, it's being used by Alma Linux, uh, Cubis OS. I mean, so it really crosses a lot of paths. Um, I, was board, I was elected uh, to be a member of the board of OpenSUSE, when was that? about four or five months ago, and one of the, the briefs I had from the, for at least the 18 months was to build, last 18 months was to build a business case for how a foundation might work for OpenSUSE. Um, I saw that it, there were some certain conflicts that might arise with SUSE versus OpenSUSE, so I thought the best way to do it would be a completely independent um, foundation. Um, and I just went ahead and did it. Because there would be, it's the fastest project, fastest way to, to get something started, and then everyone can start contributing, which is what's happening now with with OpenSUSE. All right, um, yeah, and we're thankful for that. <laughs> so, uh, so where's some of the issues? This is this is rather important. Um, you know, of course, we want to represent the the community in general. We want to. Uh, advocate for, be an advocate for our contributors, uh, and that, in, that includes every, every, every open source developer, you know, we want them to be welcomed, and we want to push sort of like a conversation with some businesses as well as community. So um, looking at that sort of a background I can give you, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Google Summer of Code, but um, projects that are participating in this, uh, Google actually can fund that and they provide funds to the projects that are mentoring. Uh, this can sometimes be an issue um, because the community is actually putting the effort toward this and they're bringing in new contributors and other things, but like there's no way to actually take in that money and then sort of let, allow it to go back into some community efforts or events or things of that nature. Um, it's, it, and so, I mean, companies could technically take in the money, but you never know if that's going to end up in the project because it goes up into a budget and then kind of trickles down, right? So you want to expand on that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Example two, Spreadshirt. So, you know, you have people that want to buy, for example, lovely t-shirts like this. And, um, and so anyway, like the funds for that, um, it just, it kind of accumulates. And we, for years, we never had a place to put it. Right? And now we do. And now that uh, people that are purchasing something, those funds could actually be brought back into the community. So that, that's just some of the few examples that we have. Um, the other one is sort of like a safety valve. Um, if you know anything about OpenSUSE or SUSE, uh, SU well, rather, we'll just say SUSE as a company, over the years, it's been purchased several times. And the community always has a fear that when these things happen, that the new leadership might not understand what community is. And sometimes that is the case. Uh, sometimes you have someone who purchases something, an open source company, and they don't understand open source. And so it gives some mm, fear, and so Having something like uh, a foundation will help solve and be a release valve should, uh, let's say, it, the project become disbanded. It'll, it does allow for an area that people could gravitate toward and put a project under, and, and hopefully, like, you know, there are many other people that want to still see that project go forward, and so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, and I just, uh, just said that, uh, you know, it, in the worst case scenario, if the bankruptcy of, of, a, of a vendor means that the community has no home, then we can be that home um, and would encourage projects to use us as a home in order just to, for, to provide a continuous home for the membership. Uh, so another, another issue could be like um, with equipment. 
that becomes a problematic to some extent because companies, you know, they, they have to have control over that equipment. And you have com community contributors that want to be able to participate and want to be able to interact with that hardware uh, for the benefit of the project. Well, um, something like this, something like the foundation that we're trying to build here would allow for something of this nature where a community could, you know, ha have a bunch of cloud instances or something of that nature being run and being able to have access to that as a community. So that that's one of those issues. Um, and, and then, uh, of course, the last point, sort of like with the bridging corporate and community, um, for example, you have something like a travel, we at OpenSUSE have a travel um, support program, and I think Fedora has one as well, so very community-based. And sometimes, like, you'll have people from different companies want to go to each other's conferences, and, um, and so they might work for a competitor, but uh, the people that are in the system might have might find that a conflict. When I mean like lawyers, they'd be like, oh, well, we don't want you to be taking money from, let's say, a, a, a competitor of ours to go give a talk at their conference. Something like this with the foundation will allow that to be alleviated. It, it becomes a neutral ground. Uh, and so that's, I guess that's another aspect of that we're, we're looking at with the, with the foundation. Do you want to add anything to that? Okay. Um, so our purpose, you know, again, representing community, representing contributors. Um, we also, of course, want to advocate and sponsor for events, and, and doing that um, through the previous slide that I went over, like getting funds in that direction, where companies are contributing, um, people are buying in to some of the things that are established with logos and, and whatnot, or efforts like GSOC. Um, so we want to be that funding target. Um, you wanted to cover the promote adoption of hardware one? Okay. Um, one of the things we're also exploring is like, okay, the idea of maybe like as, because um, as, this is relatively new, but as things start to grow, like why not like corporations or, or some of the traditional companies like uh, pull their efforts toward sort of like having some sort of analysis or something like that of like new projects that are entering the system, uh, a variety of things that, that, that they all touch, right? Like, like obviously like Canonical or or, um, or Red Hat, they'll they'll be working on the same projects that, that SUSE will be. So I mean, it gives a, a neutral ground for um, to to sort of like pull the efforts and then like us to build something. That's, that's a value for them. And, and I'm a big person on analytics. I really enjoy that stuff. So something like that could be, could be established. Um, and it also gives a center of gravity for people to look at um, with the, yeah, I mean, the growth, of, the growth of open source. It also allows us to market it and, and advocate a little bit more having this data that is collective. So, um, of course, the last one, you know, accelerating software and hardware. Um, you know, that, that is a, that's a key balance thing because you have people that want to move fast and you have people that want to move slow and this is across the entire spectrum. And so uh, we just want to be sort of like in the position where we could start to establish frameworks to help some of these companies um, and, and help community as well because this becomes some issue. There are some issues that you, you tend to have with like, let's say, uh, x86, uh, 64, like V2 or V3. These, these things kind of become rather uh, complicated and you have people that want to move forward and you have people that don't. Um, but, you know, uh, it, could, it could serve us well to be a foundation that some of these things are, are discussed and, and we take a neutral point of view and we, uh, we thoroughly examine it. So, so the benefits. Um, again, independence, I think that's, that's really kind of what we're here for, just being a neutral party. That's what we're established for. Um, Again, an open and collaborative environment. We're trying to make this a little bit more transparent. Um, sometimes you might have corporations that have a problem. Let's say they're a public trade company. Well, you know, they have like they have to be very. Um, hmm, I can't think of the exact word, but but you know, 
when they do an announcement, they just they have to blanket that. They can't like give uh, an announcement to s some people that might be viewed as insider trading. So these kind of become problematic things. If you give it to a neutral party and allow that to take place, then you're they're being like we're being transparent. It it makes us or it makes them um, be. It, it, I guess it takes away risks that companies have. Um, yeah. Um, at, the, at the risk of sounding slightly, um, I don't know, uh, controversial, it's actually all about taking back control to a certain point uh, of the projects and the, the funding and the community <clears throat> so that the outside world knows what's going on. Um, so, for example, how much, you know, how many people here know, know how much Red Hat contribute to open source? I mean, they're selling it, but how much are their, are their funds go to developing it? The same with, um, with Oracle. No, that's, that's a good one. They've taken essentially all the source code from Red Hat and made it their own, but how much are they contributing internally? And if we can have some sort of central and I'm not pitch, picking on those two either. I mean, every, every, uh, Caesar's had some problems with, with budget for the open source community that they're, they're meant to be funding. Um, so it, it's all about trying to make something that it's, it's, a, it's a balance against the corporations that want to exploit open source. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I fully agree with that. Um, Um, so, you know, those are some of the benefits, you know, we're looking at reducing the risk. Um, we're looking at sort of like collaborating and having mutual efforts be, you know, visible and also, you know, serve as like a, an opportunity for people. I mean, this is, this is a relatively new thing and so it could go in a lot of directions. And uh, we want you to at least participate or engage with us and as again, this is kind of like slowly building. Um, you know, see where this can go. Just it's just like any other other open source project. You know, you're only going to create change if you're involved with it. So, uh, talk to us after the con after the conference or after the talk. Uh, we want to engage with you. What's it? Yeah, there's an open SUSE desk out here, and, uh, and we'll be over there. So, come see us. Um, and then, in summary, right? Like, so these are some of the key things. Be a be a single point for, for sponsorship, be a single point for um, community, for funding, um, taking part in this ecosystem that we all share. Um, we want to add value for people and projects and companies, and we'll do that by, you know, getting, sort of building this up, getting more maybe subcommittees or something of that effect, some people that have an overview of, of, of the projects and are participating collectively. Um, and then, you know, the, again, the openness is also, is difficult to replicate for companies. I think if you, if you give some internal thought about what you're going through with open source project, I think it'd be helpful, you know, evaluate your risks, see how a foundation, something like the Geeko Foundation can help solve that. I think that's very vital. Um, and then, you know, Build, build and be a part of this and, and help grow and expand this. That's all, that's all we're really here for. That's all we're really asking for. Do you want to summarize anything? Okay. So uh, with that, it looks like we have at least about 10 minutes for, for questions and answers. If anyone does have any questions, anybody? So, so you started uh, by by giving some context around uh, how how you come from SUSE and like and all that. But uh, but then the follow-up slides they kind of didn't have a lot of SUSE in, in them. So I'm I'm curious how how uh, do you, do you also uh, open to like um, let's say funding or rather working with with people who are doing something outside of SUSE realm, so to say, like outside of SUSE ecosystem. And if yes, then how would that look like? Like, is a person come to you and pitch you a project, or a group of people come to you and pitch you a project, and then you decide you're interested in working with them? Like, how would that look like? 
Uh, well, the, the idea has come from OpenSUSE, uh, but it's not necessarily directly linked to OpenSUSE or SUSE. I mean, I don't, I'm a member of the OpenSUSE community, uh, but I'm not an employee of SUSE. Um, so okay, so SUSE is like completely so out of equation. Of over there, and yeah. we're going to contribute it to it, um, and any other project is, is welcome to join, and, and or any other corporate is certainly willing, if they're willing to, to donate funds. Um, and then we, right now, we don't have this, uh, the ability to, to manage or, or control that whole thing. If, you want, if you've got a project and say, I want this amount of money and I'm, it's this successful and I got this many stars in GitHub and et cetera, et cetera, and we've got money and we, we don't have that you know, way to do, to manage those funds yet, but we're getting to that point. Right. So it'll be on a case-by-case -case basis. But there's, there is a little bit of a link with OpenSUSE, but part of this has come from a desire to be separate from the funding mechanism of SUSE to OpenSUSE. But it's all open source anyway. Um, is that, that answer? Makes sense. Yeah, is that, is that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, pretty much. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and sort of just to expand on that, like if people, we do encourage that, right? It gives a neutral place to like put a project and then that could build, right? Like you don't know who's, who's going to find use of that. Um, and so it gives it a new, as a neutral ground. So for example, um, we're going to be approaching all the major hardware vendors and seeking donations from them and they all see that that's almost a bit of a way to bypass the Linux vendor involvement so that the manufacturers are putting money into something that is only ever going to be good for them. And then the, the vendors in between, the, you know, the, the, the Canonical and SUSE and Red Hat and et cetera, and they'll be the, benef the beneficiaries as well, but in the involvement of the hardware vendors is going to be quite valuable. So, yeah. Where the virtualization layer? Any, any other questions or thoughts? I mean, definitely would like to also hear feedback. We're, we're not just here for questions. Like, this is all new and, and really can go a lot of different directions. Is it a stupid idea? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> ah, any day now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it, 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 we we do we have a shop set up. Um, uh, we just have to put it on the, the website's up. So geekos.org, yeah, and, um, and yeah, you'll be able to see it. So, um, and again, like that that could come in like. Uh, we, for other projects too, if they're having some of the same problems, like I'm not, we have communication with Fedora, if that's something that they want to do and house something there, like, again, it's a neutral area. It allows them to take some of those funds in and then return it to back to uses that, that are, are valuable for the, the community in general. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it. So, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>